Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Beaver and today we are making a poison apple. This is not an apple shooter. But before we get into that, we're just going to pop over to Pass Beaver real quick. He's just going to talk a little bit about the process and then when I come back, future Beaver here, I'll talk a bit about the recipe that we use to get to this point as well as how to work with a strange fruit like this. And if you don't know what this fruit is, it's a quiper. Now I'm going to put the English name down here because I will horribly pronounce it. So yeah, here in South Africa we call it a quiper. Let's quickly pop over to Pass Beaver. He's going to explain the exact process that we use to distill the product that we have in front of us here. Past Beaver here and as Future Beaver just said, there was a couple of guys that asked that we explain a little bit more about the actual process of the distillation and not just focus on the recipe. So what I'll be doing is as I'm going through the process of distillation, every time I do changes or setups or anything like that, I will record it and we'll put it into this video. So it's going to be a video on the actual process of doing this specific run. Now this run we have here is a lemon and quiper run. We let it ferment out and we've now filled the boiler. So the first step in your distillation process is to fill your boiler. Now you're not going to fill your boiler all the way. As you can see we did leave a lot of headroom here to prevent puking. Now what I also prefer to do is when I start off my run like I'm doing now and I've got my element on full power going into the boiler I do not put my lid on. I leave the still open for the first 10 to 20 minutes depending on how long it's going to take for this liquid to heat up of the uh, heating up process so there's no foaming or anything like that happening and it also prevents a boil over from happening or a puke in that matter by allowing it to heat up like this exactly like when you put a pot of pasta on the stove the moment you put the lid on it starts boiling over if you take the lid off it doesn't now we're trying to simulate that with this run here where we allow it to heat up without the lid on now i'll check back once we're ready to get the still all assembled up and then we'll talk about the next step in the process with the still now sitting at a nice hot temperature and you can start feeling the heat coming off of the top of the still it means that it's ready to cap it now there's a couple of ways to test it I would normally shoot for about 60 degrees centigrade that means that the majority of the foaming that was going to happen has already started taking place now you don't want to wait for this to become a rolling boil because remember the element is still on full power we're only going to start turning down the power on the element the moment we start seeing vapor being produced within the column or we can actually feel the top of the still getting hot but we'll talk a little bit more about that once we're done assembling the still now we're going to start assembling the still now so none of this vapor goes uh, gets lost and we start losing alcohol in the process with the temperature now starting to being felt by my hand it's time to start capping it now because this is a fruit wash and we want to pull some flavor into the distillate and we don't want to completely strip everything away we're still going to run the still with all six side glasses in place but we're only going to run it with three plates now a plate is a bubble plate system that's within the column of the still. You can use packing or whatever other substance that you want to put in there that is chemically resistant that will allow passive reflux to happen. Now, a bubble plate is more of an active reflux system, meaning it's going to force interaction between the vapor moving up the column and the liquid that will condense on the top of the plate. Now, once the still is running, I'll show you a little bit more about that. But with three plates within the column, we can aim for about an 80% ABV takeoff and that's perfect for a brandy or a fruit wash that we're doing here. So it will give us a nice balance of flavors as well as enough alcohol by volume to actually give you a nice clean product that's not contaminated with some funky flavors. Now the next thing we're going to put on the still is what's referred to as a deflagmator or a pre-condenser. Now the section we are talking about is within the column you'll see there is a pre-condenser almost like a shotgun condenser now we're going to run water through the top of this condenser here to cool down the vapor and force it to drop back down the column so it's going to be active reflux forcing the vapor back down so we can get a higher abv thus a cleaner product now as you can see the first sight glass has started filling up with your vapor so you can actually see little droplets starting to form 
that means that the vapor has reached this section of the, the column. We still have this element at full power. We're wanting it to now move up to the next side glass. And as you can see, the next side glass has started forming some condensation on the front of the glass. And then the glass on the very top has, or the next glass up, almost has no condensation. So the vapor will slowly start moving up the column. Only once we get to the deflagmator right at the top there, we will start decreasing the power being put into the still and controlling the vapor we're taking off. As you can see that the temperature now at the top of the still is slowly starting to rise. And if we look into the side glasses, we can actually see that the precondenser is now pushing vapor back down in the form of liquid and it's loading up all the plates that we're using. So all three plates are now fully loaded. We have the reflux condenser here running at full capacity, sending everything back down the column. So it's now it's time to start balancing the column. And the way we're going to do that is by turning down the power over on our power regulator. So as you can see that the temperature has now started rising in the top of the column. Time to start turning down the power. We're using a SCR controller that's running through a PID. So what we're going to do now is push down the power to roughly 60%. The reason why I choose 60% is I know that's the point at which my still will balance the column and I have enough vapor going up and down in the column so we can get it nice and balanced. So the moment we start turning down on the reflux, we actually have a good amount of liquid coming out and we can control our ABV. Now that the still head has balanced on a temperature and the temperature on our controller has also balanced to that head temperature that we have there, this means that the whole column from top to bottom and all the plates are equally loaded. This means that we now can start taking off our four shots in our heads. So all we're going to do now is just turn down the amount of reflux running through the precondenser. And this will allow us to now increase the amount of vapor that goes past this point. And then we can start taking off our four shots and heads. So with us now hitting the 80% mark and tasting as we're going along, we have now completed our four shots and heads cut. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to quickly drain the parrot, allow us to do a small little transition cut between the four shots and heads transitioning into the hearts. And as soon as I know we've done that transition, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some fruits into the gin basket up top here just to bump up the fruit flavor that we have in the kettle. So it brings out that nice fresh fruit flavors. Now if you're going to run a normal pot still that you do not have a, a gin basket or a method of putting the fruits inside of the vapor's bath, you can cut up the fresh fruit and just put it into your boiler just before you start up your still. So with the fruit now into the gin basket and the still still in full reflux, it's time now for us to dial back down on the reflux up until we get to our takeoff speed that we had during our hard cut that we did the transition in and then we're going to have that fresh fruit as you'll see we switched over to a bigger jar that means that we're now going to start collecting hearts so let's turn down the reflux on our precondenser and start taking the hard cut so now that we are getting to the end of the run how i know that is a couple of signs that point to the end of the run coming up now and we're getting to the end of the hearts Number one is on taste and smell. So I'm starting to smell what I would define as tails. So I've switched over and started collecting into smaller jars just to see if I can get a little bit more flavor out of the tails. But we are getting to the end of the run now. The ABV has started dropping off substantially as well as the temperature has started rising consistently throughout this last little bit of the run. So I'm just going to collect a tiny bit more and then I'm going to cut off. Now, if you want to run into your tails or do a deeper tails cut, that's 100% up to you. Now, I normally do not collect tails. Once I start tasting and smelling tails in the run, I cut off the run and then I finish up. Um, if you want to run up to whatever percentage you want to run to collect the tails, you can run up until your alco, alco meter reads zero percent alcohol coming off the still but i'm almost complete with the run now so i'm just going to give it a couple more minutes and then we're done 
Now, as you saw there, past Beaver distilled this to quite a high ABV using fruit in the gin basket. And the fruit that we put into the gin basket was the actual quipers. So we tried to pull some more of the flavors out because the wash itself didn't taste a lot like the quipper. Now, the wash that we used was half lemon and half quipper wash. We started off by first peeling the lemon and then pulverizing it, put that into the fermenter. We took the quipers and put it on the stove. We boiled the living heck out of it with a lot of water. And then we added that hot liquid into the fermenter along with the lemons. We then topped it up with three kilograms of sugar and we ended up with the original gravity of 1.070, giving us just enough alcohol in the wash so we can distill and have a relatively clean product in the hearts. Now, when we were distilling it, uh, or when Boss Beaver was distilling it, he took a rather conservative four shots and heads cut. We then did a transition cut before putting the fruit into the gin basket where we drained the actual parrot and um, took another small cut because we put the still into full reflux. We got some really funky flavors coming off of there. Then we did a complete hearts cut. Here we have a hearts cut coming off at 83%. The whole jar here is sitting at 83%. Now, I don't know if past beaver covered this, but I generally do not collect tails. Once I start smelling tails, I put my still into reflux for a little bit and see if I can clean up the cut a little bit. But at the end of the day, this wash just didn't want to clean up. It got all foul and rank on the smell, meaning it went into tails really quickly. Now I did take a small little cut and I tested it and it never made it into the original hearts cut that we did here. Now the hearts cut wasn't taken um, in this big jar all at once. We did take a couple of small jars in the beginning and the end to see if there's any flavor drift. But yeah, the flavors that came off the still was a very peppery citrusy smell, not lemon citrusy, but more if you've ever had a quipper, that citrusy sour apple type of taste. And yeah, a quipper has almost like a peppery flavor to it. When we were boiling it in the pot as well, it had a really peppery smell coming off and that carried through into the heart's cut. So we didn't end up taking any more tails. We stopped the run. I did drain the bottom of the gin basket just to show you guys that this is the liquid that was left over in the bottom of the gin basket. Now it smells like um, a heavy mixture between an apple and a pear. I wanted to use that to blend back into the heart, but at the end of the day, I tried a little sample of it, didn't work out. So I just sticked with the heart cut. Now let's get into the actual shooter that we made here. Now, the reason for me choosing to make a shooter out of this or a liqueur out of this is that these flavors aren't the best flavors that I've ever tasted. The quipper does not or will not play well with wood. That peppery note in the quipper is just going to overpower everything else. So I wanted to play with that citrusy flavor from the quipper with the peppery note from the pepper and combine it into a nice little liqueur or a shooter. The recipe is as follows. Step number one is get yourself three medium sized apples and just chop them up leaving the cores out. You don't want any pips in the infusion. The pips are going to make it really bitter. Next up, you're going to need half of a pineapple. Now this is once again a medium sized pineapple. So half of a medium sized pineapple and remove the skins. Uh, you just want the nice fleshy part into your infusion jar. Next up. Any proper liqueur needs a buttload of sugar. Now we're gonna go for a one liter batch. Once again, the full recipe as well as the description on how to do it will be down in the description box below. But this is 80 grams of sugar per one liter of product that we're gonna be making. Next up, the fun part. You're gonna be using your distilled spirit. Now, if you do not have a brandy or a fruit wash like I'm using here, you can use your normal sugar washes or even a store-bought bottle of vodka. Um, try and get something with a nice high ABV. You've got two choices when making your maceration. You can either proof your spirit down to the 
desired ABV and then add it into your maceration jar or you can add the high proof spirit in first leave it overnight and then drain it off and proof it down the higher the ABV the faster it's going to extract those flavors out of the fruit but you also run the risk of extracting flavors that you do not want remember alcohol is a solvent so it's going to pull a lot of flavors out now for me with the experimenting the best thing i found was to proof my spirit down before adding it into the maceration of the fruit i found that very high proof spirits tend to pull out a little bit of a bitterness out of the fruit that doesn't really play well with this kind of shooter that we're making now so for this recipe i'm going to be using 400 mils of my 80 percent abv and then topping it up with 600 mils of water before adding it into this this will bring it down to a roughly about 30 35 percent including all the juices and the sugars inside of the jar already it will bring it closer to about 25 percent giving you a nice shooter that has enough alcohol but not too harsh now just to give it that little bit of a pop and just bring out the color and making it look more like a shooter i'm going to be adding some food coloring now this is electric green food coloring this is completely optional if you don't want to add the food coloring into it you do not have to this is purely for me for aesthetic reasons to just make it look a little bit more funky now if you stuck around this far you are probably wondering what does this stuff actually taste like now keeping with the theme of the poison apple i put it into this little flask over here just to make it a look a little bit more authentic on the shelf now this is chilled i did put it in the fridge overnight so it is supposed to be drank chilled that brings out the nice fresh apple and pineapple flavors and then that hint of pepper is going to hit on the back now like i said it needs to be chilled that brings out the nice fresh fruit flavors and both those both the pineapple and the apple shows up quite nicely it's more of a artificial apple flavor than a fresh apple but it is a nice citrusy hit from the pineapple and on the taste it starts off really sweet then it heads into that candy apple kind of pineapple candy flavors and then it ends up with that nice peppery note that the quippers bring to the table now to finish out the video the question on my mind and i'm pretty sure everybody else's will i be using quippers in the recipe again most probably not now the flavor is very delicate and even using it in the gin basket not a lot of the fresh apple flavor from this pulled through more of the pepper note that it has pulled through if anybody else has a recipe out there using quippers and the proper way to use it please put it down in the description box below and i'll gladly give quippers another go but for me the flavor that this gives is definitely not worth the effort and if you stuck around this far have a lack of day.